Welcome back. Now we will consider problems that involve non-concurrent forces. So when we are faced with problem of non-concurrent forces, we need to remember that now since the forces are not passing through a single point, you need to consider their turning moment also. So our first task, uh, so we need to have some technique in order to solve this problem. So what we can do is, uh, we would uh, treat this problem as if it's a problem of concurrent forces and then we consider their turning moment also. Now you know what is the turning moment. When you do open a door for example, you apply a force and the effect of, the, of that force is uh, to rotate the door around the hinge. right? And you know that if you hold the door at the tip, you require less force you hold it near the hinge, force apply the force near the hinge, you require more force. And that is uh, uh, pretty intuitive. So you can, you know that, right? So what is the turning moment? Now consider, so our task is uh, to be able to shift the forces and make all the forces, given forces to pass through a point. So that we treat that as a problem of concurrent forces. And then we, uh, we would um, take care of the turning moment. Now in order to effect this shift of forces from one point, now we are considering coplanar forces, from one point to another point in the same plane, but we are introducing error. So we need to rectify that. So see, uh, so let's understand how do we do that. So let's understand the technique. So let's say that we have a body like this, right? So this is some body and on this body there is a force of 10 Newton acting downwards on the left hand surface of this body. Let's say this is point A, this is point B and uh, the distance here, the width let's say is 2 meter. So now we want to shift this force of 10 Newtons uh, at point B. So how do we do that? Uh, in my, in, uh, what, what, what I mean is we want to shift it but at the same time the effect of this 10 Newton on this body should remain same, right? That's our task. So what we do is we would um, uh, we would now consider two forces which are cancelling each other. They are uh, they are opposite to each other and of, of equal magnitude of 10 newton. And we apply them here at the point B, right? So let me draw the same figure. So okay. So it's the same figure. And what we do here is, this is 10 Newton as it is and now we are applying two forces of magnitude, sorry, of magnitude 10 Newtons here is 10 Newton acting downwards and this is 10 Newton acting upward, right? So these forces are cancelling each other. So we have not altered this diagram in a way, right? So effect of 10 Newton remains and these are forces cancelling out. So this diagram and this diagram, I mean, these figures are equivalent, right? So uh, this is equivalent statistical, uh, statical um, uh, system, right? Uh, now let's consider this, this, this figure. You can treat this, interpret this system as if um, acted upon, this body is acted upon a force of 10 Newtons and a couple, right? This 10 Newton is acting downward, this 10 Newton acting upward, the distance between them is 2 meters. So these are two parallel forces opposite in direction and their effect is to have a counterclockwise turning moment equal to 10 into 2, that is 20 Newton meter, right? So we can consider the force acting on point B, this is point B, this is point A and a couple acting, uh, and a couple which produces turning moment of 20 Newton meter on this body. So let me draw the third diagram of the same, it's the same figure, same object. So now I consider 10 Newton acting downward and the effect of this couple and I'll consider the effect of this couple which is moment and this moment is uh, on this body, the uh, moment is uh, counterclockwise and the magnitude is 20 Newton meter. So I'll show 20 Newton meter as uh, a, a, a moment, turning moment. So 10 Newtons and 20 Newton meter is a counterclockwise 
turning moment right so this body this bo this system this system and this system they are all equivalent so what we have achieved we have shifted the force of 10 newton from this edge to this edge but while we do that we have also considered the effect of this 10 newton on uh, uh, about point p the effect of 10 newton about about point b is to have a turning moment in uh, counterclockwise direction so this is 20 newton meter right so uh, just to make it clear suppose this body uh, imagine this is not supported this hold held like this and i apply a force okay I'll, I'll take it like this okay so when i apply a force like this the effect of this force is to push the body downward at the same time to you know turn it in a counterclockwise direction so when i'm shifting uh, when i'm shifting this force from here to here right so i need to consider i need so if i if i shift this force now what will happen uh, the effect will be to uh, make it uh, uh, turn it clockwise when you are looking from this side but that will not be equivalent system so what i am doing is i want to retain the earlier effect of this force and the earlier effect was to you know turn it anti clockwise so i am applying the force here and i apply a turning moment on this body which is counter clockwise and here in this case it is 20 newton per meter so every time you shift a force in a plane from one point to another point you can just shift it freely but at the same time transfer the effect of that force on that point which was uh, you need to consider the perpendicular distance of the force original force from the point to which you are going to transfer the force and turning moment has to be considered if you do that then you can freely transfer the forces so as i said just transfer the forces make them pass all the forces in a plane make them pass through a single point and then consider the effect of turning moment of each of these forces right and add them up algebraically and we will solve the problem uh, the next video will be on a problem that explains this principle uh, neatly. Thank you.